also having heard her stand up for herself you really have to question um just how much of an understanding she has of the way her actions can lead to some some in t unintended consequences she seems incapable of grasping the idea that maybe maybe she she might be the issue right she mentions the people she has problems with she lists them off and the fact that they've got a vendetta against her and the fact that they're doing all these to fuck her over and then change the narrative about her but sometimes in life i think if you have so many people around you pointing a finger and saying really mean things about you it might be just might be because you're saying some fucked up shit it just might be because you are um purposely wrangling up people or purposely winding people up and i think the weird part of her of her yes jaws is that she doesn't seem to she doesn't seem to be she doesn't appear as a she doesn't come across as a very vindictive person she doesn't come across as a provocateur she doesn't strike me as somebody that's saying things to elicit a reaction it just seems like she's a bit ditzy and she says and does things um uh in sequence that would make you think what the fuck are you doing right why would you do that right um so and considering just how she's viewed in hip-hop and you know the kind of Un unsaid things that are going on with her in general with women and especially with black women especially with black dudes who are trying to holler at her probably didn't get a chance to holler at her or if it may be going there's something really weird happening in the air when it surrounds her jaws and i can't really put my finger on it because when you look at her on paper she doesn't really do that much wrong really if you think about it right she's what from florida she's helped to put a few of the guys from that scene on she promoted parties all around the country she was, I don't know, integral part of Rolling Loud and getting people on that stage. She helped to manage Zero Seven Shake for a while, introduced her to good music, um, got her radio thing going on, like clothing brand, um, collaboration, I think, with Puma. She seems to be like, you know, fairly, um, she, means she seems to be doing fairly well for herself without having to step on anyone's toes, without having to snake anyone or, or on paper look as it appears as she's slipping her way to the top. And even if she was, I wouldn't really give a shit, it's not my business, but... She seems to be doing things pretty well, right? In a, in a quite the right way. So I think having watched the interview, it just seems to me that people don't like her and she unlikes people, right? And I think it's fairly okay for you not to like somebody and just for us to coexist in this world, this kind of little subculture that we call hip hop or this little community that we have called hip hop, right? I think it's fairly fine. It's okay. There's, there's no harm in that. You don't like her, she don't like you, no problem. But I think some of the weird... Um, underlying tones that have been used about her in terms of race, in terms of cultural appropriation, in terms of being a culture vulture, I think that's grossly, grossly unfair. And some of it um, really misses the mark as to why these things are being said in the first place. I've, I think I mentioned it a few times, I think prior, when it comes to... Um, oh, I think I mentioned it prior when it comes to... I was thinking the other day, right? There's a few... It happens a lot. I don't know what... Just me thinking in my head. I was thinking, if I was a girl a regular looking girl, like I say, whatever, from middle of nowhere, right? And I saw an influx of these kind of influ um, health and fitness and um, wellness influencers coming into that space who were ridiculously attractive, ridiculously fit, ridiculously had their life, to, uh, who appeared to have their life together, right? It really rubbed me up the wrong way that they'd, they'd come up to me and tell me that my, it was okay to have curves, that they would promote body positivity, it just struck me a bit disingenuous. It just kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. And when I, the first person I think of when I think of something like that is a Jamila Jamil, right? Jamila Jamili or whatever her name is, right? The person that's always kind of going at the, uh, the Kardashians for promoting flat tummy tea. You look at someone like that who, you know, could easily um, be a model, who easily has, uh, you know, who's, you know, who, who, who could benefit from the uh, beautiful privilege. And for someone like her to kind of be, you know, talking about body positivity and embracing your curves and, you know, you're unique and you're beautiful the way you are. It just comes across a bit disingenuous, right? It just doesn't doesn't really, you know, sit right with me. Now, just thinking about it from a girl's point of view. And then it got me thinking in general about um, how hard it must be to work in an industry, um, being a female and also being ridiculously attractive and also being really good at what you do. There has to be an issue with that, right? That's be something that you have to kind of constantly combat, something that you can't really help, right? The fact what you look like and, you know, what, what is what it is. I think she mentioned in the interview herself, um, yes, Jules, that she does overly sexualize herself, but, you know, what, what can you do, right? She's a young girl. She thinks she looks hot in clothes or in no clothes sometimes, it's all well and good to do what you want to do. It shouldn't cheapen what you have to say, but sometimes in life we can't help but think that, right? It's a, it's the reason, the, there's a reason why when people go to court, they don't wear scruffy clothes, right? They want to put their best surf together, right? Um, sometimes you can't help but, you can't help, sometimes there's nothing you can do about what people think about you based on what you wear or how you present yourself on the interwebs. But 
there is also an issue that no one wants to talk about of how hard it must be for people that are really attractive and really good at what they do, right? Especially when it, especially when you have a bit of a, you know, unappealing personality. Let's say with just Jules. I wouldn't say she's unappealing. I've never met the girl, but I could get why people wouldn't like her. I can understand why, right? How she might come across, right? That's all well and good. But I think there is something about her way she looks that really, that really is the main contributing factor to why people don't like her. I think if she was ugly, right? I think she, did, she didn't look the way she did and she still said things that she said. I don't think they would want to cancel as much as they want to cancel her now. I think the fact that she says what she says, the fact that she looks the way she does, the fact that most dudes in that industry want to fuck her, I think is what leads to this weird sort of battle that's happening, right? Where um, some of the women that are in hip-hop who kind of want to be cultural influencers, who kind of want to be the movers and shakers, the touch points of, of, of culture, are getting a bit annoyed when this, like, you know, fair, fair-skinned, I think she's Latino, right? I think she mentioned she was Cuban or whatever she may be. This, um, uh, on, on paper, white girl is kind of coming in and kind of taking what they think is rightfully theirs. And that really kind of like rubs me up the wrong way because I think in general for people to succeed, people to take over the world, we need allies in all different from all different races, colors, and creeds. Hip hop should be an umbrella or an example to the world by and large. A world that's been you know inundated with populism and nationalism and identity pop uh, identity politics. I mean, hip hop should be a platform where we can all come around together and show the world. Look, look how look look the amazing work that we can do under the umbrella of hip hop. Look at all of us, where we come from, socioeconomic levels, background, race, colors, and creeds, and look how united we are, and look at how far we've gone forward in uplifting this entire scene, right? Instead of kind of um, sniping at each other and telling this person isn't black enough, that person isn't, that person's too white. It's just like, it's just, where are we going to go with this? This isn't going to get us anywhere we want to get to. But with that being said, you know, people got to let the jokes fly. The thing that I thought that was most funny about the whole interview was her kind of conversation about the Joe Budden issue, right? Why she thinks Joe Budden might have an issue with her. And I think I actually left some stamps on here because I don't want to listen to the whole thing. But here's one of the stories that she mentioned about Joe Budden, right? Because her and Joe Budden were apparently cool in the beginning. She was on one of the first podcasts that they did when it used to be called Our Name Is Podcast Later. And all of a sudden the kind of narrative changed and it kind of got a bit messy with her. But here's what she has to say. You didn't buy it, right? right? You didn't buy it? No, I didn't. Shout out to Joe Budden for lying on his podcast saying that I bought my ass because I didn't and he knows that. Oh, talk to that nigga. Talk to him. Sorry, we never got to go to dinner, Joe. Um, I was a little busy when you were hitting me up, but... Oh, shit! Shit. Wait a minute, wait a minute! Oh, and by the way, Murder Mook is so corny. Like, I think he's one of Joe Budden's friends or, you know, industry friends or whatever it may be called, but he's so corny. Have you ever... We all have that guy in our group, right, that when girls are around... They do the most. They try to be the most jokey, the most fucking jovial. They're always trying to go back to, oh, no, let her, let her speak, let her speak, let her speak, that kind of shit. Oh, you was licking her ass so much throughout the entire interview. It was so kind of nauseating. I think towards the end, he, started, he realized what he was doing and tried to kind of compose himself and tried to be act cool, but it was too late. He was acting so cringe throughout the entire interview. And I think, again, this goes to show just where the kind of conflict will happen. Now, imagine if this was happening in a room full of just industry people or people from the scene and black girls around and they saw um, guys that they kind of respected, hip-hop artists, you know, um, I don't know, um, drooling over Yes Jewels, right? Hanging on her every word, laughing, overly, overly laughing at every joke that she did. I can, I, I can understand where the resentment will come up from, but it doesn't really come from anywhere real it's not she's not something that she does it's not her fault that guys are acting out this way especially imagine murder mook is joe brother's friend and he's sitting there and kind of hooting and hollering and oh shit oh shit about something that she's saying you know quite disparagingly about one of his mates there's nothing that she can do to help it but you can understand where comes some of the festering ill will will come from let's carry on wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute <clears throat> You no, said, I'm gonna, not look for real. Because oh no, listen, I'm this. This is for real. This I, is, so here's the thing. I'm pissed off because here's what happened. Wait, when you said Joe, you said dinner, you Joe said dinner. had me on his podcast. He asked me to come on his podcast. I came on the podcast. He was super cool. I fuck with Joe. He was super cool. His team was cool. His team was funny. I might need some liquor. After that, we ended up. Um, yeah, I might need some too. After that, so it after it? that, all of us, like me and my homies, that came to the podcast to his house for a podcast or whatever, mm-hmm. we all went to the city, got lunch, chilled, hung out, um, and then. After that, uh, he would hit me up randomly just like to hang out or whatever. And I was just like never able to hang out. Then one night. Well, 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 Mr. Joe Budden. That is a bit sticky, isn't it? Because, you know. I'm in a movie. And he calls me three times in a row, Joe Budden, randomly, right? 
I was with a dude. I was. De- I'm in a movie with a dude. I'm. I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. And Joe Budden co- pops up on my phone. How long ago was this? Three times. This was like a couple years ago. Okay. So, I, so. <laughs> Murder Mook really, really helping out his friend here, isn't it? Murder Mook is really being a good friend here, isn't he? A real good friend. God damn it, man. I pick up just in the middle of the movie, just so my dude knows, like, um, you know, it's nothing weird. So I'm like, yo, Joe, what's up? He's like, man, I'm at Kith right now, and they playing me. You need to tell your homie, like, they can't be treating me like this here. I'm like, yo, 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 calm down. What happened? He's like, nah, I'm about to give it to this cashier, man. You better tell, you better call Ronnie and tell him right now that he's got that he's got somebody over here that's about to get beat. And I was like, what happened? He's like, they won't let me return these sweatpants. And it's such a Joe Biden thing to do, right? He's fucking arguing on the phone, hooting and hollering because of fucking sweatpants. 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 Okay? Sweatpants. So, listen, and it's nighttime. I'm in a movie. He called yeah. me three times about some $400 sweatpants. So, listen, so I call Ronnie. I was like, listen, Ronnie, you know I hate to bug you about this right now. And Ronnie is chill Jewish man. He hates... He hates drama. He's in bed by nine o'clock. He's got his wife. He don't care about any of this clout mm-hmm. shit. So I'm like, yo, can you do me a favor, man, and just call the uh, the the store in uh, Soho and let them and tell them to let uh, Joe Budden return those sweatpants. It was open at that time, the store. The, in, in Soho. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So I was like, yeah, let him return the sweatpants. So Ron, Ronnie's like, man, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, please, just do it for me. So he's like, let me call you back. Boom, boom, boom. Movie's over. Ronnie calls me back. Jules, my store clerk. Just sent me a screenshot of a picture of Joe wearing the sweatpants outside his stoop or Jesus at his house. Christ. And I'm like, what? And he, I'm like, yo, send it to me. <laughs> he sends me the picture Joe's wearing. This is the thing, like, because there's some, there's, it's, it's an American thing, though, right? It's an American thing of like standing and putting your outfits. Like, Joe Bunn's got loads of pictures where he stands there with his outfit and then it's a weird caption. You don't really see a lot of English dudes do that, right? It's, a, it's not a European thing. Mostly, a lot of European guys have the picture of them walking somewhere, like a press shot, like a lot of the sh- the sartorialist thing. But it's a really American thing to just stand somewhere with an outfit and just look at the camera, right? And just like have someone take a picture of you. Joe Bunham's got them all lit on his on his fucking Instagram feed, and he's got maybe maybe if not the worst dress sense I've ever seen in my life. Up there, maybe with a decent mirror like kind of style of wearing like where it's just like what the fuck are you wearing like just a fucking you know tornado of brands and colors um um you can so much so that he's got an actual parody account out at the moment instagram called joe button fits that's fucking hilarious i recommend you check it out but it's a very um it's a very american thing though i don't really i don't really see a lot of english dudes do it just stand and take pictures apart from the influencers just regular dudes just stand and take pictures and be like you know and put like a quote on the flipping caption it's not really a thing that we do if anything like i said i've, I've seen a lot of the kind of like the sort of tourist pictures where somebody's uh, on smoking on their phone walking somewhere they try and take like a candid tmz sort of like paparazzi kind of shot but the american thing of like just standing and taking pictures is so bizarre it never looks natural it always looks weird and you know, especially if you're Joe Budden and you dress like shit anyway, it looks even more bizarre. But hey, ho, what can you do? And again, that's kind of, that's kind of one on one, isn't it? It's one it's one on one of 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 um, wearing clothes that you might return somewhere in the future, right? Don't wear them in public and don't take pictures of them on. Same like if you're gonna call in sick to work, don't start posting Instagram stories, right, of yourself out in a bar somewhere or posting on Instagram. You go zero dark furniture on social media if you if you call in sick at work. That's the thing that we all knew, we all know what to do, right? We all know what to do in that regard. Even liking stuff on some profiles can be dangerous. In the sweatpants. So now he makes me look crazy because he wore the sweatpants and he was, yeah, I wore them in a picture. I didn't like them. I'm trying to return them. Jesus like, Christ. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or he just made me look crazy. And just return them because you got them off the picture. Because- so, yeah. So basically, ever since then, we didn't really like converse after that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a problem with a Joe Budden, right? Especially if you have Yes Jules. He doesn't have any shame. I love Joe Budden. I love the Joe Budden podcast. I listen to it every single week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And it's fairly obvious to see that this guy has no shame, which is part of the reason why he's so successful, right? He doesn't have any shame. Like, it's why he was, you know, for, I think, six or six or seven tracks, he was ranting and hollering, barking at the moon when it came to Drake. And he didn't feel as if, like, he he looked crazy because he generally thought that Drake was sub, uh, sub um, subbing him, whatever it may be called. They had a personal issue behind the scene. But to us and the outside public, we thought this guy looked fucking nuts. And we let him know this repeatedly. And he just didn't care. He just kept releasing six minutes, seven minutes, ten minute diss tracks again and again and again and again until he stopped us suddenly, right? He doesn't have any shame. So mentioning this story about him to mostly people, regular people like me and you, right, would be like, oh, so cringe, man. I embarrassed myself. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I fucking embarrassed myself in public like that. But to Joe Biden, he has no shame. He'll probably go on a fucking 10-minute, 20-minute rant about this whole situation and break it down and make it look okay. But 
fucking hell how embarrassing is this like really how embarrassing is this now just just embarrassing just like you know why just you know it's just it's a pair of sweatpants they don't want to return to you cool man kick before us kick off kick up kick some display units and keep it moving but i don't know man i don't know i don't know and I kind of thought he was a clown. So after that, <laughs> after that and then here comes ah, Madam. Ah, so then, oh, that's your friend, right? Imagine that's your friend. That's your friend. But again. I think I'll stop it there because it gets corny and Murder Mook keeps laughing and doing his thing. You can watch it yourself the whole interview. But essentially, what it comes down to is that the, the, some people don't like Yes Jules, Karen Civil, Scotty Beam. They don't like her, which is understandable why. Effectively, they probably don't like her because she's just black. It could be a reason why. It could be because, you know, where she looks, could be way too conscious says things. But also in the Yes Jules thing, I think if you're Yes Jules, you have to really get better at um, your the way you speak and the way you conduct yourself. I think... In general, there is a lack of decorum. There is a lack of articulation in the scene about really explaining yourself. And I think it really goes to... And the thing, if you think about it a lot with her kind of recent relationships, I think you can see why Yes, Jules and Kanye are friends, right? They both have a lack of communication. They both struggle to put words and sentences together or to really understand how their actions could be viewed one way or the other, right? She doesn't really understand how sometimes things can work in all... The way things happen in kind of... They play out in public can sometimes shape the way people think of you and the narrative that's going around it and you have a big part to play in it sometimes taking a step back and not saying things and keeping mum or calling people uh, behind the scenes and arranging meetings whatever it may be called can go a long way in order to kind of fix your image I, I think because she obviously cares what people think about it. even though she's talking about this sort of stuff and acting like she's not bothered and she's you know being the big girl she definitely cares about what people think and it's definitely great in her and getting at her that everyone is kind of saying these things about her and trying to festively counsel her because you know she has a whole team on her back. She's trying to make an industry. And the more that people, you know, the more of these sniping that she gets, the people in the scene that are going to be, you know, heads into work with her. So much so she mentioned before, she lost her record deal basically on the back of some of the things that she was, answers she was doing in public. So I think if you're yes, Jules, the only thing you can control is what you do in your actions, right? You can't control how people view you, how they respond to you, whatever it may be. You can control your actions. I think she has to really look in the mirror and really analyze and think to herself, what am I doing to contribute to this level of hate? and toxicity that's coming my way and venom is coming away because it seems like it's very mean-spirited scotty bean wants to beat her up karen civil is calling her out on her bullshit joe budden is gonna probably um rant about her for 45 minutes on his podcast later on today they really really don't like her there has to be a reason why this is happening think about it clearly and maybe change course but i think in general as a, as a community it's okay if you don't like somebody it's okay you can just not like somebody and kind of go and carry on with your everyday life you don't have to get along with everybody that's around like it's all well and good she can do her thing um with the soundcloud rappers and, and continue putting them on and making sure everyone's getting opportunity that way and promoting her kind of all girl kind of con con conglomerate company she's got with the never not working thing and the radio stuff she continued doing her thing in her own um, universe without having to infiltrate or having to step on anyone's toes on the other kind of quote unquote mainstream end that we can all work together but we should be working together in order to kind of propel and lift up this whole hip-hop umbrella community that we will live under because i think that's the best way that we're going to succeed this sniping and you know and aiming at everybody and calling people out on their race and saying they're culture appropriate when they're really doing more good than bad is neither here or there i think for the most part and she's generally not a culture bro i don't think so i don't necessarily think she's doing anything that bad for the most part she doesn't get on with the certain personalities in the scene but that's okay for the most part she's putting artists on she's got a company she employs people what's the problem here let's just all try and get on and get on but i think if you're a job button like don't return fucking 400 dollars sweatpants and then blow people's phones up in order to return them that's fucking horrible that's cringe as fuck but again what do i know anyway that's 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 that for that let's move on because i've wasted too much of my life um figuring out what um, the issue is going on over there 